everybody, I'm Brooke. And I'm Cheryl. And we're, we're the, the Secret, Secret Garden, Garden Girls. Girls. Okay, folks, so let me introduce to you with Green Bee, Melissa and Damien. And this time we came back to Tucson in 2014, <laughs> 2014. 2014, and decided that we were here to stay. We love the desert and um, started thinking about how important it is to conserve resources, mm -hmm. especially being in the desert and all of the things you can do here. And um, would love to find something that we're really passionate about. And so we bought this beautiful place uh, four that and a half beautiful. years ago. <laughs> and it was mostly driveway and mm -hmm. a few mesquite trees and gravel. Right, lots of gravel. <laughs> and decided to just start putting our hearts into it. And it has become this natural um, progression of planting. We've planted almost 40 trees, something like that, mm -hmm. 23 fruit trees. We've been growing blueberries for six or seven years. And we'll show you those folks in a little bit. Stick around to the end of the video. You guys are gonna be a, a shock. <laughs> so, you know, we had our first growing food garden really near Sabino Canyon, our whole backyard. We had one of those backyards with the walled in space so that there aren't a lot of critters. Mm -hmm. Was easier there. Our whole yard was pretty much food. Decided we loved it decided it's great for our kids. Our uh -huh. kids love to grow their own food. They eat healthier. Uh -huh. And um, decided we're so excited about it. I'm passionate about it. You can probably see that. <laughs> and, you know, so we're decided that it would be something to start putting out to others to see if we can help support it overall growing in Tucson and got the business name and everything settled about six months or so ago. Oh, how interesting. Well, we're really excited to be here and to help you guys along because we have a pretty good viewership and we're getting bigger and bigger as each month goes by and you folks are exactly the kind of folks that we want to champion on our channel. Okay, so why don't we just follow you guys along Okay. and you guys just tell us what you're doing here. Okay. This used to be a concrete courtyard. Oh, with a my big goodness. cinder block wall all the way around. Oh. And a gate right here. Oops, sorry. And then basically nothing. Um, and so we decided that we wanted more space. We knocked down the wall and leveled the ground enough and decided we were going to build something to grow our veggies in. Uh -huh. But of course, it has to be critter proof. Yeah, so let's go into the right. keyhole here, so folks. This started uh -huh. because we first thought about the tiered terraced garden. Uh huh. And no way to protect from the wildlife. So, yep. Damien built this. This is little Fort Knox for the critters. And you can see, oh, look at this nice broccoli. Yes. Oh, broccoli going. We just picked our first um, cauliflower. They start. They came in a little late this year, even mm -hmm. though we planted on time. Mm -hmm. They have their own schedule sometimes, but we had a big, giant cauliflower about, I don't know, easily eight or nine inches. That was pretty big. You got the kale and chard. Oh, and your Swiss chard. Mm. It's one of my favorites. I'm Absolutely. growing a ton of it right it's now. Delicious. It is delicious. We've been sharing the bounty. We've got carrots in here and onions. Kale. Okay, two different kinds of kale. All of these seeds are from Native Seed Search. So they're native. Nice. Native acclimated so that they don't need quite as much effort. Uh huh. And I don't know if you've seen these or you've grown these before, but these are chickpeas. Yep which are just adorable. Flowers look like little orchids. I love yeah, them. Yeah, that's really pretty. Mm -hmm. And you know, the interesting thing is this one. So there's three here. Uh -huh. These two, I planted them all at the same time. This one planted, and I saw your recent um, topic. This one I added worm castings. Yes. Do you see how much bigger this is? Mm -hmm. yeah. So we actually, underneath these beds, uh -huh. these have, some of them have straw. Some of them are based on more of a hugel culture. Oh, okay. So in the whole back side was our unfinished compost, sticks, twigs, right. all the bugs and worms that went with it. So there's actually a living whole ecosystem underneath all of these plants That's contributing. That's fantastic. Great. Okay, well, let's keep moving. But what we're doing, both this side, so this is here because I'm going to mosaic it. So this is actually on the outside, so there's actually some air space in between. Um, so it helps with the insulation and then it will have additional insulation once we have the mosaic all done here. And then I'll be doing some plants along here. Same thing in the front. Okay. <laughs> okay, <laughs> folks, and let's the talk about the Moringa tree. You all have seen our little teeny seedling. And this one is how old? This one is one year old. Well, isn't that something? And you started it from seed. Started from seed. One of my beautiful gardener friends offered me a seed and I stuck it in some soil almost exactly a year ago. And it's gotten huge. And I was concerned about the javelina and rabbits, but you can see how thick this trunk is. Yep. 
because what I do is keep trimming it back. So yep. after about two feet, cutting it back, yep. after every foot, keep continuing to do that and it sends all that strength into, into the trunk. And of course it was a mild winter. Yes. But yes. It, we did you can wrap see it, it didn't. Straw. And it didn't oh, you did wrap it in straw. Just the base. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. So now we're in the back, and a different area, folks. That's right, so this is the backyard, and I've actually lost count, but I think we're at 23 fruit trees. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. We've got um, most of these, well, not most of them, all of them were put in in the last four years, most of them even within the last year or two. So they're just baby plants, but you can see actually the apples are at a place where they're starting to produce. Nice. There are little apples happening. We've got two Wonderful. apple trees. The pear tree that is slow to wake up here. We just put in a jujube tree. Um, mandarins, oranges, lemons, limes, peaches. Wonderful. Yes. Although what we've been doing is getting, um, we have a friend who has goats. And so we've been getting some of, we don't think, this part's probably not great soil. Uh huh. We get a very different experience in other parts of the yard. So this part is probably not great soil, but what we've been doing is adding not only mulch, which is so important in the desert. Organic. Yes, mm -hmm. organic mulch, and also getting from our friend some of her goat manure. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And we've been spreading the goat manure here with the mulch and continuing to put mulch every year, uh -huh. plus things like fish emulsion. And uh -huh. so far, I mean, we try to live as harmoniously as we okay. can. So let me ask you this. I suspect you're an intuitive gardener. Indeed. Yes. So tell me about that. Tell sure. me about your intuitions. So I think some people probably think it's a little, maybe it's, it's not quite the norm. Uh -huh. um, I believe in relationship with plants. So for me, part of it is necessity. We have three small children. I have another full-time job. We have a lot of things to do. Um, I don't have the time and the energy really even if I wanted to to have a very specific routine I'd be setting myself up for failure so I enjoy my garden mm -hmm. I develop relationship with the plants so I come out and spend time looking at the plants talking to the plants checking on them looking for bugs plants will tell you what they need if you just pay attention that's to right. It, right that's the bottom line that's right yeah beautiful Sometimes okay. one of them decides it doesn't want to be here. That's that's true. <laughs> but then on. they but then they, they go, go into compost and then exactly. they continue yeah. on. So that's there right. is never it's a, a, always an ongoing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, always first, ongoing. First few trees that didn't make it are at the bottom of the hugel culture now. That's yeah. right. Yeah, yeah. Right. right. Exactly. Still providing. Yeah, and so you do have um, and do you have a, like a, a, a traditional compost here? Right here. Behind right you. behind you. Oh, oh, here it is. <laughs> okay, excellent. Okay. Side on the right, we're keeping a little fresher and. Theoretically, turning over more often, uh -huh. um, and then on the left is, is the, the stuff that'll be another year down the road. Gotcha. Plenty Excellent. Plenty of lizards in there. Oh yeah. When I turn it, and the roaches come pouring out. Yeah. Big ones, yeah. and the lizards will gather around, and they'll just fill up. They'll get so <laughs> fast, and they don't wow. care. They'll be like on my foot. They don't care. So I, it's just being in harmony. Roaches are gross, but just let it be. I know <laughs> bugs are gross it's, in general, but you know what? Eaten. Here's the thing. <laughs> You find other bugs that eat the bad bugs, right. and then you have everything's no got a problem. job. That's yeah, right. Yeah, we <laughs> actually found some praying mantis eggs on a few of our Beauty. trees this oh, year, so yay. we're very excited, waiting for those to hatch. Actually, one is in the garden house. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. All right, folks, we're going to take um, a walk over to the blueberries. We'll see you there. Ready? Talk to us about your blueberries. So interestingly. I never actually liked blueberries. Huh. I've always loved them. <laughs> I like blueberries. He has experience of eating blueberries in Massachusetts. Mm -hmm. Wild blueberries. Yeah. And our girls love blueberries. So uh, I still can't remember if it's six or seven years. It's at least six years. We decided to buy blueberry bushes and try our hand. We went to Magic Garden and they advised us that you wanted mountain blueberries. So we have five. Mm -hmm. You can see the five boxes here, these wooden planters. Mm -hmm. So we have these five and we've had them for about six or seven years. Um, we had them at a previous house. We've always kept them in pots. So the big thing with the blueberries, they have to be in pots. Our soil here gets far too alkaline, far too fast. Yes. Yes. It's much easier. There's, your, there's one of your tricks. That's, That's one right. Of them. Mm -hmm. It's really hard to keep blueberries, give them what they need. So these have always been in pots. Um, because I am a relationship gardener, intuitive, um, intuitive to gardener. 
we they're probably more neglected than they are babied to be honest uh-huh. Uh-huh. damien puts uh-huh. coffee grounds uh-huh. on them once a month probably every couple of weeks something like that how Give interesting them. interesting right. yeah so when we're done with as the i drink coffee and use it yes yeah, yes save the grounds sprinkle uh-huh. them over there mix them into the mulch and so that's what the blueberries are digging very interesting right. the other thing that i think is you know fun to point out is that it's good to put pollinating plants mm-hmm. nearby so yeah. while the blueberries have a gorgeous smell and these gorgeous flowers on them having extra attraction for pollinators so i have alyssum in some of these planters I switched to something more native on here. You can see these um, tidy tips uh-huh. are these really pretty flowers here, um, but that's more of a native wildflower and there's some blue ones in the pot over there. But we put these globe mallow around and so they're really covered in pollinators. Yes, mm-hmm. pollinators are so important. That's right. Yeah. We have five different pots now, or boxes, and I think that was one of the other tricks was they love company, right? Yes, um, companion growing is a really big deal. Right. It's something that we really talk about a lot. Yeah. So, well, so yeah. folks, that gives you the rundown on their blueberries. All right, she has some really important questions, so listen up, folks. <laughs> so Green Bee Holistic Services is a company that you guys started, and you provide services to the community. Can you tell us about those services? Sure. I'll start. Yeah, I'll start. So... So I think the the main thing is that um, we really think of home as both the inside of your house and the outside of your house. So it's garden as well as the interior. And we can do things that help people to um, really take advantage of the resources that they do have and not be um, in in that eco-friendly way, right? Really being kind to the earth that we live in. And so We do things like in our house, we've done things where you can insulate your house so that you don't rely as much on heating and air conditioning. You can do solar hot water tanks. Solar uh, roof vents, if you have a a rafter roof that will reduce a lot of your energy bills. We've done that in a previous home. And uh, like Melissa was saying, insulating the interior of slump block walls, which tend to take in a lot of heat, so. So some of the services that you offer that are on your website are that um, your food garden guidance and setup. Mm -hmm. Um, So tell us about that. So that's where I'm most passionate. Um, And I, but like we've been talking about, right, I'm much more of an intuitive gardener. So I'm not the person who has all of the answers, but I do believe that it's important for people to, if they want to be growing things like their own food, that they have the option. So I'm happy to work with people in whatever setup they have and whatever they're looking to do. We have things like the grow house, we have things in the soil to really help people get started in that place where they don't even know how to get started, but we're happy to work with them with whatever it is they need to really help um, encourage their their growing and make sure that it's successful. Right, And, and the barter piece is an important thing to mention because we do really believe in, um, I'm very fortunate that I have a job in tech that this is a passion project for us. And so, um, you know, it's not always based on money. It's not a an exchange always of money. It's if there are materials to be purchased, that's obviously a cost, but we will work with people to, to in a sort of a co-op setting so that we have the option to be doing a more of a time bartering. You know, if you have someone, if you have a skill, then I would give you hours and you provide the hours back into the hive. Perfect. So what's in the near future? So we are starting to do some collaborations with some other folks who have similar visions. Um, You know, why compete with people who have these great ideas already? So we're doing some collaborations, always open to that. Um, One of the collaborations coming up is with a company called Strategic Habitat Enhancements, a woman named Carrie Ann Campbell. And it's a native plant sale that is benefiting the Gila Watershed Watershed Partnership. And it's a order your native plants in advance through the website, and then they will be picking up here at our house, which then, of course, people can to our garden house if they oh, want to. Oh, that's turn. fantastic. And where would they find the list of plants? To the Green Bee Facebook page. We have an announcement on it. Great. Okay, Perfect. great. Perfect. Well, folks, I just want to say thank you very much for allowing us to come into your home. We'll be back to visit with you folks soon to see how things are going. Bye. Bye-bye.